sit up straight and tall. So yeah, you're trying to open and we're trying to uh, use the quiet part of our nervous system to help our lives day to day as we live with disability. That's what we're doing with this energy that comes when you quiet down. We're trying to utilize it and fold it into our experience of living with disability to actually ground us and improve the quality of our lives. That this part of our, our nervous system that precedes our mind actually has more value than just helping us with disability. It's something that our culture is amazingly not having. So sit up straight, straight and tall. You're centering, but by slowing down your mind, you're perhaps, by learning to let it go empty and not be afraid, People are afraid of the emptiness, so they're listening to other voices. And the other voices are looking for power. They're not looking out for our interests. Feel the room. Be more connected. Know that your spine and the awareness that I've always trying to pass on through yoga the awareness to your midline is crucial to human survival. Not just this. This is proving to be very vulnerable. We're seeing it. So lower your center of gravity. Lower your connection. Get more connected to the earth. Start the simultaneity of the grounding sensation being part of the mental sensation, right? So hit down and start to lift up with your will, lift your chest. So you, you're simultaneously going towards the earth as your will is trying to fill the vessel. We're missing earth energy here and we're, that is so deep. We're, for, we're like making bad environmental choices. There's no right way to do it. And by the way, we're all complicit in the destruction of what's happening to Earth, but Earth is resilient if we hear her song, right? We gotta hear her song. We got to feel her value, not believe in her value. Feel it. Start to notice your breath as you're feeling grounded and rising. Drop a silk curtain down the back body. Balance your head over your neck. Keep the lips together, teeth slightly apart. Don't be afraid of your emptiness. Don't let someone take that away from you. It's yours and it's the earth's. Let go of your day. All this heavy talk coming right out of the gate on a hot, hot Monday morning. Feel the simplicity and the connectedness in your experience, your received experience of body. Notice the inhale, the exhale, the top of the inhale, the bottom of the exhale.
keep the chest lifted. Stay hopeful. Good, and then release. Take your sternum up towards your chin, your chin down over your sternum. Stability in your base, discipline in your rib cage. Let there be a disciplined contact between your inhalation, your rib cage and spine, and your exhalation. Take in the world and lengthen through your spine on exhalation. Take in the world on inhalation. Come towards action and extension on exhalation. So damn lucky. Raise your head up with closed eyes. Open your eyes. Of course, there's a million things I want to say, right? But at one of the lines after saying our leaders are failing us, or in the in the in the greeting, our media is failing us. So here, so it comes down to this: it's you and me, and hope makes three, right? <laughs> That's what it is. It's you and me and hope makes three, right? <clears throat> One of the things that I find really important about what's being passed down by yogis is that they're really interested in getting the I, the ego to dissolve, right? They're trying to get you to be less judgmental, not just morally, but like so you can feel the experience of connection right? The experience of connection in its relationship to disconnection. It's not just connection. That's the sensation. And now one of the things I've been thinking about this week in practicing is that my breath actually has all of it in it. In having the three parts, in having the activation of the inhalation, but then there's a pause at the top of the inhalation and emptiness. Right, and then it, and then the release and the and the willingness to be of service and action on exhalation, right, and then a pause at the bottom. We have both action and ceasing within our breath, right, and so the fact that there's three parts. One of my wonder thoughts this week has been that the fact that breath has three parts in a way that includes the ceasing. There's the taking, there's the giving back, but there's also the perpetual ceasing in the background of your breath. So, and I've, I've, I've thought that about the last. So notice your inhalation and the movement of your exhalation. So I've said this to you before, your breath, the inhalation actually introduces movement. But the whole time, there's a ceasing behind the movement and they're integrated. They're connected. Whether you're breathing through your mouth or your nose. So the real paradox that I think the yogis are trying to pass down is that it's the empty part that's the unchanging part. The stability strangely comes not from the movement of the inhalation and the exhalation. It comes from the ceasing that's incorporated in the breath. Stability is in the ceasing, not in the action and and, you know, again, you don't have to think my words make sense, you know, it's your belief, but I'm telling you, 
I found over and over is that when I'm striving and trying to do, I'm less connected than when I'm quieter. And the yogis are trying to get you to integrate both energies, the happening and the ceasing, all right? And it's in every pose, right? So again, let's try to make this less heavy and start to use movement to be able to make it lighter, right? Mind's gonna think of the ceasing, the ceasing as terrifying, right? As actually something to avoid. And apparently we're willing to believe a whole bunch of fiction to avoid what's happening, right? So I'm moving around, I'm even gonna dance a little bit, right? Because I want there to be lightness in me, not just heaviness. The ceasing does not have to be heavy. It's heavy for the mind, right? It's scary for the mind. The mind is only one expression of our consciousness. And then come forward and, you know, I've been trying to tell you the length in your low back. It really matters. The junction between your spine and your legs, one of the places where the core energy on an anatomical level disconnects is in the hip joints and the transition between the low back and the legs, right? And so you're trying to get that more awake. So if you notice, I've been teaching for a while now, trying to get you more aware of the crease between your legs and your spine. So if you think about what was happening last week or the last time I taught, I don't know if it was even last week, right? Right? Because I was trying to get you to feel this space, right? So come forward. And the way I was doing it last time was trying to use your hands to help, right? this space open, right? So coming forward, coming back, pushing on my legs, getting this space to open as the hope comes out of my chest, right? So I, and now I want you to lift up again, because remember, I want there to be lightness in the base of your spine because it's the lightness and the hope that has to integrate with the earth, right? So I'm going back and forth trying to use movement to make my consciousness more awake. Again, side to side. I don't want this truth to just be heavy, right? I want it light. And so now I'm gonna lean forward again and I'm gonna practice having space and lightness Soon as I lean forward, I lose some of the connection, right? Maybe you don't. And one of the reasons why when you're leaning forward, I want you to extend from your inner groin to your inner knee down to your inner heel is to keep the earth part of the action, right? And then lift. And so I also tell you to broaden across your sacrum and lift your chest. Because I'm trying to get, and then drop. Because I'm trying to get us to practice the relationship between the ceasing and the will. So now hit your sitting bones down, lift the chest. Now broaden across the sacrum, exp expand between the collarbones, lift the sternum up. As I lift my chest and feel hope, does anyone feel their legs more? I do. That'd be the earth part, receive it. Help it lift your chest, have it help it, you lift your chest. Good, and then I'm gonna go back. Whew. And you thought you were just doing cat cow. You kidding me? You're not just doing cat cow. There's so much truth here. So you're convexing, right? Now lift again, sun salutation. Think how much sun salutation is making your spine do. You're touching different worlds from the inside out. So I'm hitting down through my sitting bones. I'm lifting my chest. I'm broadening across the car bones. I'm broadening between my shoulder blades. I'm broadening across my sacrum. I'm extending up through the core channel. I'm following it with my chin, my eyes, right? 
and then release. Has anyone ever seen those crazy yoga books? So when I was a little kid, my dad practiced some yoga from a really sensationalized bad book. I'm like four or five and I'm 56 now, right? And there are these pictures in the book that actually, I used to sneak into his closet and look at this book and be like freaked out by the images, right? Because it was, have you ever seen those images of like where it's, it's lying, right? Where they, you bulge your eyes, extend your tongue, right? right? And I remember thinking, oh my God, who are these scary people, right? Unfortunately, I now get why they're bulging their eyes and opening their tongue. Because on every fiber, they're trying to get the grounded energy to go upward, to, to actually have it come all the way up the top of their head. One of the, so, so let's just like do this. So we're gonna do this like crazy thing that like made me horrified and gave me nightmares as a little kid. But then I keep going back to the goddamn closet and looking at that book when I was four, right? So, and I found the book, my mom kept it. She gave it to me not too long ago again. It's as bad as I remember, right? right? So I'm forward here. So I've got momentum going towards the earth, right? So I'm gonna utilize it. I'm gonna press down through my feet. And, it's gonna, and I'm going to hit my sitting bones down and it's going to lift my chest, right? They all go together. Huh. Shit, you mean that whole thing is unified? Yeah, that whole movement, it's got a lot of stuff in it, right? And I'm grounding my forearms on my desk. You do it on my, you could do it on your, on your legs too. So now you're going to start to concave the back. Your chin is going to rise, but don't rush. Don't shorten the back of your neck too much. So as you lift your chin, lengthen the back of your neck and lengthen the front of your neck, right? But hitting down through the sitting bones the whole time. Start to look up, drop the shoulder blades down, broaden between the shoulders. And now I'm gonna continue. I'm gonna open my eyeballs and my mouth and stick out my tongue, right? And then release. And I'm having that be an expression of my spine. That's not an act of the ego. The yogis are bringing that forward as an expression of your spine, right? As a continuation. Now, even though I did that too hard with my eyes, so I'm almost a little bit dizzy right there. I over bulged my eyes. So I'm gonna come back and ground for a second, find the earth again, go like, oh yeah. Remember, this was supposed to be a continuation of the earth skyward that used my body as a vehicle, right? Not an act of my will. So I'm going to get, I'm, gonna, I'm setting up for a real good one coming up here. We're going to do it at least two more times, right? So I'm trying to make sure I'm staying here and not getting caught up in the drama of what I'm about to do. Come forward again ground my sitting bones, ground my feet, broaden across my sacrum, lift my sternum, connect between my shoulder blades, drop my shoulder blades, lift the collarbones up. So that's, I'm gonna release again, I'm gonna find it again. There's this concept called reposing in poses, right? So you keep bringing them back into the universe, right? Back into the world of the happening, right? From the ceasing, so repose, drop. Here's the ceasing, here's the repose. I'm bringing with me existence. And guess what? This ceasing part drop again is as important as the action, right? They all have to come with you. So here I am again, it's back, okay? And then I'm gonna go to the ceasing and now we're about to do more of it now. So I'm gonna come into it. I'm gonna lift up. Okay, so now I'm gonna, again, broaden the sacrum, cross the sacrum, feel the sitting bones, lift the sternum, lift on the collarbones. And I know what's about to happen. I'm gonna like look up. I wanna lengthen both sides of my neck. And I'm gonna like make my mouth and my eyes be part of the pose and my tongue. And then I'm gonna release. Does anyone notice that it was hard to breathe when you're bul bulging your eyes and saying that your tongue? Guess what? You're not supposed to breathe there. That's part of the retention. 
that's part of the ceasing, right? Which we're trying to fold into action in a yoga pose. You're trying to get the ceasing to be part of the movement. Huge breakthrough carried and passed down by the yogis. What we do with it, I don't know, right? So we're going to do that one more time. And then we're going to do it one more time again with something that blew my mind that I talked to you about a couple of weeks ago. So I'm going to ground, happen, down, up, right? I'm going to start to lift my chest, concave my back, lengthening the front back of my neck, open my mouth, let my eyes go, right? And then really, can you feel that hum get louder in me? I can. I'm going to sit back and try to appreciate it. Slow down time. What I hate is when a yogi breaks through and not goes, I got to do that 5,000 times. No, you don't. Especially if it's new. Have the discipline to integrate it. Use time. Gonna breathe a couple times. Now, just give me like I'm feeling it because I'm if I were in the class with you in person, I would know this better. Thumbs up or thumb down? Is this too weird? Thumbs up if it's okay. Right? Are we good? <laughs> okay. Because I'm feeling like I'm out here, like in the sea scene out here, because I'm without you because we're not directly connected with our bodies, right? And, and there's both a limitation and an advantage to that. So now the final one that just, I think is, I didn't realize this and I've, I've referenced this conversation with Richard Freeman before about the bondas. And we're sitting at outside a yoga journal, eating lunch. He and his wife, Mary, who's also a fantastic yogi and we're talking. And we're talking about the bond in this freaking core channel, which we're trying to get the core channel to come out through our tongue and our eyes and our mouth, right? This is what we're doing right now while not losing the earth, right? We're trying to get all of them in sync. We're trying to get vertical expansion, horizontal expansion, all in a container. All this stuff is trying to happen in that pose. Okay. And I, I can, what I, when I, and I just don't do it right now, but when I bulge my eyes, and open my tongue. Because this is such an uncommon outward action, I end up being on the outside of that action too much. Like I feel in my eyes and my tongue, because that's what's happening, right? So remember, I learned there's certain exchanges I've had in my yoga history that I keep processing. And that conversation with Richard Freeman is one of them. And he didn't even mean to be teaching me all he was teaching me, right? But that's how I am as a student. I listen and I take it and I apply it, right? So I know in this action, I never liked it as a little kid because it seemed like a monster, right? It seemed too outward and too weird. So in that conversation, he's talking to me about a class he's going to teach on inversions and the upper palate. And I've been thinking about that and wondering about that and thinking, God, he's up to something. Because when I try to actually, and he does the, the Uriyata Banda, it's like, like supposed to get tiger flame. I don't want to go into all that. I've said that before to you guys, but whatever, whatever, right? And he was saying to me that that has to, that rise, the, the you know, the torch in the water, the, the pilot light which is Uriyata Banda more, the ignition of the pilot light, right? Needs to continue up to the top of your palate and even make your eyes go up. So when you're doing this and opening your eyes, your eyes are actually reaching up into your head. But what I didn't realize and why it seemed too scary and dramatic to me for so long was that I wasn't doing it enough on the inside. And I realized his comment about the upper palate was really important. 
So on this last one, as we go through that whole thing we just did, right? When you start to go up, I want you to go inward enough to travel from the base of your spine through your upper palate. Have that be why your tongue comes out and why your eyes go out. What I realized is I was doing the eyes and the mouth and the tongue without the inner core of the upper palate, which he was trying to teach upside down, okay? Blows my mind. But if you teach the upper palate upside down, you're getting more earth in it. All right, so here we go, here we go. All this extra words, right? All this because we're trying to create stability in action, which is what our world slowly, I mean, sorely misses right now. We're not acting from stability. We're acting from being frantic, right? So you're gonna come forward, ground. <laughs> find your sitting bones, find your feet. Find a connection to the earth from the inner groin to the inner knee down to the inner heel. Be in the C scene in that sense of connection. Without the earth, the sky is meaningless. Okay, so for us at least. So I'm, now I'm gonna like start the rise up through my spine, but I'm gonna do it by hitting down through my sitting bones and broadening across my sacrum, okay? And I'm gonna catch that with the center of my chest, the place that I was saying hope. Now I'm gonna lengthen the front and back of my neck. I'm gonna know, but instead of moving my eyes too quick, I'm gonna remember Richard Freeman in the upper palate. I'm gonna go, oh, Oh, it goes from the upper, from my spine to my mouth, to my upper palate behind my eyes. And so when I start to look up and raise my chin, it's way more inward than outward. Then I'm gonna go, oh, I wanna stick my tongue out, like the front and back of my neck. Not hold too long because I can't breathe there. Whew. Come out of it like a rush. For those who've been doing yoga longer, can you see how this is an expression of a banda? Holy shit. The, what we just went through, and don't do this too much. This is deep freaking work in a pose. This ain't no fooling around. It's not a disco, right? By the way, I just heard a great interview with David Berman, so I had to bring the talking hand from there. Come on back, sit up straight and tall. Oh, I'm gonna like, make sure I don't get too freaking serious, right? I'm gonna make sure the lightness stays because I want the lightness, not just the heaviness, to be part of my final one, right? I'm trying to get all the actions here, like get all the spaces. You know why? Asana is about activating mind and body to reveal connection to the universe, right? So I'm gonna come into center. I'm gonna feel the room because I know in that pose we're doing as a, as a kind of a bond, a continuation of like upward facing dog. Right? I'm going to make sure I stay connected. I'm not going to try to narrow my experience. I want all of me to come into this last one. I'm going to take a couple of breaths. And when I bring all of me, I'm less likely to be violent to myself in the pose. In other words, push it too far but I have to have enough action to keep the pose disciplined. So you've got to figure out what that balance means in your world, right? In your body today, right? So I'm going back more because I know what I'm about to pop into, right? I'm going to about to make a spinal prayer or poem to the world around me, right? So one of the lines, I'm going to come back in the center. One of the lines that I've always thought was a little bit indulgently dramatic from B.K. Sangar, but I 
in moments like these, I can get what he's saying at a level that my mind usually doesn't allow. He says, my, my, body, my body is my temple. My asanas are my prayers. Now, whether you believe in praying or not, let that be stand in for the sacred part, right? That in my attempt to be connected, both to what's here and not here, movements of my body are the prayers, right? Okay, so I'm gonna sit quietly for a second. So this is what the whole, all this blabbing and then this whole class has been for this one. So I'm going to get centered. I'm going to slow down time. I'm not slowing down time to grip a pose that's coming harder. I'm slowing down time so all of me stays in the pose. I'm going to come forward. Find the earth. So I've got grounding here. Right away, I'm feeling the bottoms of my feet and my sitting bones. Not back bending yet. I'm making sure as I ground from the inner groin, the inner needle, the inner heel, and I spread my sacrum, that that already naturally lifts my sternum. Then I'm going to give it direction by hitting down through my sitting bones and more actively lifting my chest. Right? Then I'm going to repose because that's a lot. Now I'm gonna come through again. So like, remember awareness and movement is like, a, is like a wave. So here I'm starting it again. I'm gonna lift my sternum, keep my legs grounded. And now knowing that I wanna go from my upper palate to the backs of my eyes, I'm starting that as I lengthen my neck and start to look up. From the upper palate, I go, my eyes go up and now the tongue, the speech comes out of my mouth. I'm going to repose slicks. I don't want to do it again because I was talking too much for my own practice. So we're doing it again. Do this next one in silence. Be gentle, be nonviolent, be focused, be disciplined. Do it all now. And then release. I'm sitting steady here for a second because I need to ground and slow it down. I'm letting the exhale power my engines down. Coming back. <clears throat> Before we make it too light, I want to twist a little bit. Inhale, take the arm up. Exhale, bring it over. Take the other. Everything matters. That pose that we just did is in everything we do right now. So without making the eyes go dramatic and the tongue to pop out, Feel your sitting bones and how you connect it upward. Let that be here as you inhale, lift up, exhale, revolve. Don't force anything. Don't bulge your eyes, but know that that continuation of your spine is still here. As long as it stays with the earth going down. Good. And then come on back to center. So with the bondas, which I wasn't directly teaching today, got to be careful because people can get over attached to them. And they, if you do them too much, go a little nutty. In it's very deep work. Right? And then over. And then connect. I'm remembering. I'm using memory all the inward we just worked. 
not sitting on my tongue and opening my eyes, but I am. I can feel it as I stay centered in my normal twist, but I'm letting my spine continue skyward as long as it stays connected to the earth. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, lift up. Good, and then come on back to center. Now, I'm gonna get some of the rhythm here, right? Because I want my Shavasana not to be in too narrow of a space that this whole class was just in. It was narrow in order to be expansive, right? <clears throat> So I'm getting white. I don't have to take myself so freaking seriously. Right. Which is my problem lately, by the way. Feeling a little serious about what the hell is going on. I almost dropped an F-bomb there, by the way. I have to warn you. I'm taking my legs wide because I want to just like feel some openness here. Right? Because I'm about to do Shavasana. And guess what? I need this Shavasana to be super nourishing. So I'm doing all these things I know to set up. Do what you need to do to get the lightness to actually receive, right? So as you're feeling lighter, doesn't violence seem way harder to do, right? So I'm gonna practice some symmetry. Feel both my sitting bones, both my hips, both my shoulder blades, both sides of between my neck and my ear. I'm gonna balance my head over my neck. I'm gonna integrate with the room. I'm gonna stay sturdy to integrate with what surrounds me. This is an experience, it's not a belief. Stay connected. Lips together, teeth slightly apart. My instructions are coming from all the mistakes I'm catching myself making, right? I'm going through my symmetrical rest towards ceasing so I can receive and my instructions are coming. And so my skin on my face is taut. I just felt that, right? So relax your face. Lips together, teeth slightly apart. That the emptiness in your mouth, allow you to let go of your gums and even your teeth. No, and then connect that release to the center of your chest, to your sitting bones, to your feet. Drop towards the earth, it will nourish you. That's what it does. It nourishes life. That's what the earth does. It creates the conditions for our living. So then I'm really gonna let my chair hold me up. I'm gonna switch my position a little bit Again, I like my fingertips touching, or at least my thumbs. Can I find, let the earth nourish my sisi, my mind less active? Can the stability of the earth spread through the sisi like water?
feel your breath. Don't change it. Feel grateful. Like pain through your body. Notice your breath. When you're ready, open your eyes and receive more of the world. With your eyes open, nothing has changed and everything has changed. Notice. We're shutting our eyes because we're afraid. Because we apparently don't have the resources to process what's happening. This isn't a question of knowledge. It's not like we're not smart enough. Because we don't feel stable enough. Start to bring yourself back, slightly deeper inhalation, slightly longer exhalation. So for me, I've come to the place where I don't want to be some self-righteous activist, right? But I don't want to be afraid of saying some of the things that were made uncomfortable now by. I, don't, I hope I haven't offended anyone with what I've laid out because my aim is to get us beyond where we have to share beliefs or get to before we have to share beliefs, right? So that's why you're centering. Is that this level of dynamic needs to be here for us to be stable, for us to be able to differentiate fact from fiction, right? From us not to want to just believe what we want to believe. Yeah, I get having a loss of faith in democracy in the United States. I totally feel that. I'm not going to let it make me breathe a fiction. I believe a fiction of that the election was stolen, for example. But I get being disenchanted with our leaders. Common ground. Right? All right, everybody.